I'll begin by just saying our family is so grateful uh, for all who've come today, and especially uh, for the friends who've really come here with great effort from Los Angeles, from New York, uh, from Colorado, uh, family members who came from all over the country to be here. It means a lot to us. We also would like to extend some very special thanks to so many of my dad's caregivers who are here today. Um, my dad went through a lot of caregivers <laughs> to find some very special ones uh, to spend his final year's worth day after day, and you made his life so much sweeter, uh, and we are very grateful. My dad was born here in Portland in 1933, Albert Schwartz, Jr. Everybody called him Bert because his dad was Al. But his father, Al, died tragically in a car accident when my father was only three, and he was raised by his mother, Millie. Times were tough, as this was the very heart of the Great Depression. And he grew up living, he and his mother, going from her sister to her sister and other relatives to find a place to live. It was during this time that his cousins, Bob and Buddy Brenner, really became his brothers and Barbara. And, and Barbara became like his siblings. And today, we take comfort. We take comfort in thinking that Dad is reunited today with his mother, Millie, who was so dear to him, and with his brothers, Bob and Buddy. And we also have no trouble picturing that in heaven, uh, Millie is taking him right now to all the best parties. <laughs> Dad grew up poor. He never bought his own clothes, but his clothes came uh, as hand-me-downs, every one, a box sent from New Hampshire from his cousin, just two years older, Warren Rudman, who knew that these two boys would grow to reach such heights. Warren was forever grateful to my dad. When he was first running for Senate, it was a very tight race and he had no money. And my dad threw fundraisers for Warren in Beverly Hills and raised the money for him to squeak by in that first election. And my father was always proud that his cousin became a U.S. Senator. Millie met Joe Glickman on Old Orchard Beach, and they moved to California, and my dad loved Joe. And at the age of 14, he took his name. And also moving to California, starting anew, he didn't want to be called Bert anymore. <laughs> and so in 1947, Bert Schwartz moved to California and became Al Glickman. <laughs> yes, he did. And he went to UCLA as an undergrad and then for law school. And after he graduated law school, he went to Coldwell Banker. Coldwell Banker, like many of the major corporations in America at that time, was restricted. And Al Glickman was the first Jew that they hired. His first year, though, was tough. My dad went after big deals, if you would believe. 
went after mega big deals as a commercial broker, and they didn't pan out right away. His first year, he took home, his take home pay and commissions was $1,400. He used to tell everybody, he'd tell everybody that Judy and I would say we were so poor that when bread sold for a nickel a loaf, we couldn't afford a slice. <laughs> but then year two, everything clicked. Every deal that he went after came through. And in year two, my dad broke every single national record for Coldwell Banker, for deals, for dollars, and commissions. And when he left the following year to form his own company, they asked him to find more Jews. <laughs> That's a true story. In fact, some of the Jews my dad found for them went on to go and lead the company. <laughs> he became a developer and was a pioneer in developing a brand new innovation called the Community Shopping Center. Dad's specialty was to go into towns, small cities throughout California, throughout the West and to establish their first shopping center, find a good corner of two major streets, put in a Kmart, a, shop, a supermarket, a drugstore, and then all kinds of local businesses, restaurant shops, and repeat, and repeat throughout the West. In the 60s and the 70s, he worked hard. He was a brilliant negotiator. He was a visionary. And this boy who here in Portland dreamed of better things, he dreamed of security. He dreamed of respect. And then found phenomenal success. And he had fun with it. He liked cars classic cars. He drove his 1938 Rolls Royce, chauffeuring his family. We rode in the back. <laughs> he took us one at a time in his 1959 white Jaguar convertible with the red seats. And he loved beautiful houses. His house in Aspen in the house he designed here on Shore Road in Cape Elizabeth, and we hope you all join us afterwards. But more than anything, what he liked to do with his money was to give. He was the most generous man, perhaps, that any of us will ever know. He gave to museums, he gave to hospitals, he gave to the arts. He gave to public education. He felt so blessed to go to UCLA and the opportunities that he had as a graduate. And he never forgot what he was given and gave millions of his own dollars to UCLA and here to USM. He loved his library here and was honored to, honored to be UCLA's Alumnus of the Year. But mostly he liked to give to his family, to us kids, to give to us everything that he never had. And that applied to his whole extended family. Many who are here know that it's good to have a rich uncle. <laughs> and uh, my uncle Richard, my dad took us all, the whole, all of Richard's family, everybody, we went on a trip, a ski trip, and Richard had t-shirts made. And on the back, 
It said, charge it to Uncle Al. <laughs> and that became the family motto and has been for about 35 years.